You may actually think that this is a crazy and or stupid question, but how would you like to 10X your content website? Hi, I'm Jared Krause. I am the host of the Buying Online Businesses podcast. And today I'm speaking with James DeLacy, who is a professional strength and conditioning coach, having worked in professional and international rugby and rugby league. Now he owns two online businesses that are content sites monetized through ads, display or display ads, affiliate and digital products and memberships. Uh, James James also hosts multiple podcasts um, and has hosted other podcasts in the digital marketing space, knows a lot about digital marketing. We have a really cool story that we share at the start of this podcast episode on how we met through a friend, um, how he was working with a friend of mine and how they became friends and how he got into the space of basically digital marketing and making money online. And yeah, we talk about his experience on not just how he got started, but what he's doing to grow his websites. We talk about what he tried that worked really, really well. We also talk about what he tried that didn't work so well. We talked about his experience that um, him buying his first online business, what that looked like, why he bought that business based on the metrics that had, how he bought it, what he bought it for, uh, and then how he's turned that around to grow it. Basically from like a 200 to $400 per month range to 3000 to $4,000 per month range. We also talk about how he took this as a content site and his other uh, content site as well and how he pivoted both of those away from just making money through ads and affiliate. We talk about his split in revenues. We also talk about email marketing and I share a couple of stories uh, on the 80-20, you know, focusing on the one thing, how to grow a company, how to have omnipresence. We also talk about how to take a content site and turn it into a real business that people love and will pay you good money for. So this is a very impactful and super valuable podcast that we talk about so many things in and we cover a lot of ground in a short period of time. So I'm sure you're gonna love it. Let's dive in and enjoy. Do you have a website you might want to sell either now or in the future? We have a hungry list of cashed up and trained up buyers that want to buy your content website. If you have a site making over $300 per month and want to sell it, head to buyingonlinebusinesses.co forward slash sell your business or email us at info at buyingonlinebusinesses.com because we will likely have a buyer. Details are in the description. James, the host of too many podcasts. No, not yes. at all. Not at all. You are. Dude, I host four. I host four host podcasts. Four. You know that? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Did you change your opinion now? No, <laughs> I think, I think, uh, oh, it depends. It depends on how much is too much, depending on where you're at in your life. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fair enough. Welcome back to the pod. It's great to have, well, you haven't been on my pod yet, have you? I've been no. On, no. Okay. Welcome to the pod. It's great to have you. Yeah. No, thank you for having me on. It's good, good to chat, good to catch up. Obviously, I brought you on mm. uh, the Niche Website Builders podcast when that was going. So we're Absolutely. going to bring you on the other pods. Yeah, which we're going to line up and do. So guys, stay tuned. I'll post some links to the ones. So you've got, so which of the, there's two. You've got uh, the digital marketing one and then what's the other? Yeah, so so this week in digital marketing, if you search on Spotify, it's this week in digital marketing. If you search on YouTube, it's Indexy. And then... The other one's Forte Growth. So I co-host the Indexy one with Jackie Chow. And then the Forte Growth, I host myself for a friend. That's basically like niche website builders carried on really. And then I host for my own two online content sites, businesses, I host podcasts for both of those. Yeah, so awesome. it's pretty full on. Yeah, dude, there's a lot There's a lot going on and you've got your own sites going as well and there's so much to dig into. This is going to be a fun episode. I guess let's a bit of a con- give, give a bit of context on like how we met uh owen walker (laughs) so owen i met owen at the skate park uh many years ago now like and i was trying to get better at my surfing improve my surfing at the skate park and i met him there and he was an online business owner he sold his business on flipper i think i've talked about him a little bit on this pod uh we've been to a flipper event together he did a little talking thing there and um yeah he so you used to work with Owen, so Owen hired you. Well, I, I, I still, I still do writing for Science for Sport. I still he did actually that. tell it, me that you're still doing a bit, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been it's been six years, I think, that wow. I've just been reviewing research just each month for the site, just because one, it keeps me relevant with what's happening in the research. Two, it's not too intensive, and mm. three, it gives me good 
kind of like backlinks and kind of brand entity around my name to be associated Absolutely. with that. So, Absolutely. you know, why not just continue? Yeah, it's it's very in your wheelhouse. So Owen and I are pretty close, uh, really good friends now. We're actually going snowboarding. Uh, well, by the time this comes out, this you know, we probably just, Owen and I are snowboarding in Japan. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so... Owen's got a pretty cool story about how he sold his business and then sort of came back into the business uh, after they didn't do too much and, and got some equity. And it was a really, really cool story. I might have to get him on the pod to talk about that, actually. Uh, so niche website builders, right? What ended up happening there? Uh, because we used to, they used to sponsor this podcast, actually. Yeah, uh, and they sponsored a few. Give them a bit of work. And then, I don't know, did they just scale too much too quick? What happened? Yeah, it was from what they said. It was AI, AI tools and AI content kind of just stripped their business away. So they were. What was the statement? I think they in twenty twenty three they were they lost seventy three percent of their revenue because I think most of their revenue was coming from content services and because obviously people were just switching to AI. And uh, and I think with the laws, at least in the UK, they could they had huge a uh, huge number of staff, and I think they couldn't get rid of them uh, to obviously offset the the lack of revenue, and then eventually folded. Wow, yeah, it's a shame. I do like those guys; they're great. They're great people. Uh, yeah, but yeah, now like it's it's kind of like it's it is unfortunate for them, uh, but. It's, been a interesting blessing in disguise sort of for us because we were referring a bunch of people for content creation and links for them and then as you know as time evolved i thought like let's let's help people with seo let's make sure the content's really good let's show the being the backlinks are really good and really good strategy so we have our own seo agency now in-house and uh that's been going really really well so now that's the perfect plug <laughs> Yeah, it is not intended, kind of sort of intended. Like, let's start with your journey. Typically, James, I don't do like hero's journey stories, but you've had a pretty pretty cool journey through and you're still going through it and we always are on our journey of, of making money online. But how did you, how did this start with you, start for you? Like, how did you decide and why did you decide to do this whole make money online thing? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to keep it, try to keep it brief, but I, I guess most of your audience, are they Australian? Kind of no. around the Oceania region? No? Yeah, oh, okay. like in the States where you're living at the moment, but mostly no, okay. yes. a large portion. Sweet, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I started, uh, I was strength conditioning coach in like professional rugby and rugby league. Uh, like Kiwi Ferns, Warriors, uh, MLR over here, and then with Romania rugby for, not the World Cup just gone, the previous World Cup, 2019 World Cup. Um, but they got disqualified after I signed the contract, etc. Blah blah blah. But I ended up doing that, and then uh, when COVID hit, what well, April twenty twenty, I had no contract, and we were my wife and I were stuck in Romania from April twenty twenty to December twenty twenty. And everyone, anyone listening to this is from, I mean, I guess even Australia and New Zealand knows how hard it was to get back into the country at that time. My God, so yeah. April to December, we were stuck trying to get back. And so obviously with no contract, I was doing, I was writing for Owen at the time, making a little bit of cash there. But then I kind of, I don't, I don't even know how, I must've come across it on YouTube or something, some kind of blogging stuff. I'd always been writing. I mean, I was already writing for Owen. I'd written for many other sites. Just that's what you do as coaches to kind of share information and get your name out there. But I didn't know you could make money doing it. And then kind of learned how you could make money. I went down the income school course back in the day, kind of learned the general overview and then kind of just started learning more of people off YouTube and stuff. And that's kind of how I started into, I guess, moving everything from in-person dealing with, if, if people aren't familiar with the professional sporting world, it's literally the worst hours in terms of time of day and in terms of number of hours, it's probably one of the worst paying jobs unless you're like the head coach. Um, so if you're sports staff, one of the worst paying jobs, it is one of the hardest industries to get jobs in because it's so, there's only so many sports teams it's and it's so saturated. And then on top of that, you're just dealing with complete idiots most of the time and people who don't actually know how to coach. I mean, I've, I've dealt with some apps like it just killed my want for coaching at that point. Um, but I still love it. I still love the physical training, strength coaching. So all my online businesses are in that space so i can kind of marry them marry the two together 
yeah, there's it's really cool that you can grow them at the same time mm. directly and indirectly, right? So yeah. what was your – so you got into trying to make money online because literally you were stuck in – a certain location you have <laughs> yeah <remote>, right <laughs> yeah yep pretty much oh and, and i didn't like i was i was always making i guess money online on the side but i hadn't i'd failed in probably a couple of businesses in the past i always wanted i don't like to start random things but they were small things and they were just things to kind of tide me over between jobs and things like that it wasn't anything major and i didn't know enough about actually building a business for it to really be viable um but from that just from going through that time when I didn't have anything else and I just got stuck in and learning all the different things around SEO and digital marketing. Yeah. That was, that was a big change. Yeah. There's so much that you learn. I was talking to somebody about the other day. There's so much that you learn out of association of just being in the journey that, and the real value that you get, like I tell people that you could buy a business and you could build a business and grow it. But the real value you get is not just the asset, in itself is like it's the person that you have to become to own that type of asset and that's you know that's where you get infinite roi and that's why all these large mentors and thought leaders you know say that the best roi you can get is investing in yourself and so you've done a lot of that james and uh i've seen parts of you do different things and like you're doing your, your podcast hosting you're learning so much about digital marketing how where, what do you like so what you got two businesses now you got your two sports businesses what are those ones i should say i have two businesses and way too many other things on the side too but yeah two <laughs> two main two main businesses yeah yeah and what are those two so one is in combat strength conditioning for combat sports so that's sweet science of fighting.com and then uh the other one is i acquired end of 2021 it's actually an old fitness site that was hugely popular back when uh when you used to read blogs because you followed the person and you kind of liked their writing. Um, so that was liftbigeatbig.com. I acquired that in, in a 22 round. That, that side had just been hammered like over and over, had been hacked. It was like on Wix now. It had no email opt-in, no email list, no SEO, no nothing. But it had branded traffic, like still had branded, tra branded traffic like 10 plus years later, was still selling programs, had a massive Instagram account, massive Facebook page, all that. So ended up acquiring that and kind of just revamped it so those are the two main ones yeah so you started your first one uh on the strength yep. and conditioning and then you bought that next one so why so let me ask why why purchase instead of build again that was just an opportunity i couldn't pass up <clears throat> that that's the site like 10, 10 years old links from you know bodybuilding.com crossfit.com fucking all sorts of other massive sites that you know i wouldn't be able to get the links from anyway so i had already had the links i had the age i had all the assets that i needed and i had so many low-hanging fruits that all i i mean it was making i think like 200 to 400 a month with no it just from branded traffic so now it makes uh depending on the month like a little over three maybe three to four grand and it only took i don't know how long it took i have to double check but maybe like a year or so just to start ramping on content and there's so much potential like and obviously in that space because it's, my other site's geared towards combat sports i mean combat sports is growing massively you know mma jiu-jitsu all that kind of stuff which is cool but general like strength training gym equipment like home gym stuff weightlifting strongman all that is infinitely bigger so there's like a huge space in that rather than starting something from scratch then having to do you know get all the links all the content you know everything else absolutely so what did you learn through the process of purchasing it that people listening because a lot of people listening like they want to buy their first uh content site online business uh what what did you learn that would be helpful for them to know it was it was more so from the fact that i'd already scaled one from scratch that i kind of knew what i was looking at on the other side if i if i hadn't didn't have a site i was going to buy that i wouldn't have a clue like before my, my main site, yeah, I wouldn't have had a clue about what I could actually do to that site to make it better. I would have had it and I would have been like, okay, I, I can redesign it, but now what? Um, is the content any good, et cetera, et cetera. So I was able to go in and just kind of see what the site 
which pages had the links. I could keep those pages for the redesign to keep all that link juice flowing through. I could redirect whatever I needed to. All the other stuff I can just leave. I don't need to worry about making sure I have the main domain. Um, and I guess regarding the actual acquisition, it was kind of just looking at, I mean, this one was at least a little easier because it was such a public facing brand for so long. It's not like someone just trying to sell you I don't know, a site they have for three years that they built kind of thing that was kind of well known already. Whereas you like, you always, I'll always go into obviously the backlink profile and, and see what's going on there. I'll look at the kind of the trend of the traffic and keywords it's ranking for, et cetera. And if it's, if it's worth what it is, obviously you don't want to see massive traffic dips and you know, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. So you knew a lot about that from, from starting and scaling one. A lot of people in my community learn that through my course. Uh, obviously they get a lot of help in uh, re- their due diligence review before they even make an offer, which is pretty important. <laughs> um, so you, you knew what you're looking for. You came across it. Were you actually hunting for a business to buy or did you just come across it out of association of being in the space? Yeah. He just posted about it on Instagram. He was like, he's either going to shut it down or if someone wants to take it over, they can. I hit him up and hit him up initially. Um, I can't remember why I wasn't going to buy it. I was just like, oh yeah, saying good luck for it. And then I eventually hit him up again a few weeks later asking if he had sold it, that I was interested. And then, yeah, ended up picking it up from that. Cool, cool. I'm sure you got a good deal on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, yeah. I mean, it was, it was seven and a half grand, but it was like just the domain alone was worth, you know, at least that. Especially and what with all was, the it, was it making out. money per month as well? Like 200 to 400, I think. But that's with no email list, no SEO, like the shittiest website in the world. Just, just really good like, links. Just really good links. <laughs> just, just the fact that it was so well known, people were searching the brand, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah. So basically you bought this thing as a shell, but with a, you basically you just bought some authority in the space and then you, sounds like you had to do a bunch of work to, to get it going. What, what, what are some of the things that you did that worked well in terms of growth from taking that of a good backlink profile to growth. And then let's, let's also break down what you tried that didn't work so well that you, you know. Oh yeah. I've got a, I've got a few for each good things. I took it from Wix onto WordPress because Wix sucks for all that kind of stuff. So WordPress. Hang on. Then... Let's, let's, let's just break that down. Uh, Wix versus WordPress. I know why that you did that in terms of SEO, but maybe just explain for everybody like well, the difference between Wix, you know, how hard it can be to rank for with Wix versus. Well, Wix is often <clears throat> one they charge you out of the ass for half their plans. It's generally slow. It's just it's just hard to scale on on Wix. On WordPress, it's just <clears throat> everything's kind of native and it's built for blogging. So I ended up, I moved. So I obviously hosted it onto WordPress. I went through all the, the backlink profile and I found all the articles that had the important links and I kind of put that into a spreadsheet because those are the articles I was either going to redirect to a similar article that I was going to write or a similar article uh, that was there or I was just going to have it on the site. So there's stuff, I've got still got old articles on the site that have the links that have no real SEO potential but because they're being linked to, they're just there just so I can internally link out from there. So that was the number one thing I did was getting those over and obviously just redesigning the site so it could sell the programs and all that kind of stuff. So that was the main things I got started with. The things that didn't work and I'm still figuring out is because I acquired with that Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, big channels like oh, YouTube, not huge, but five and a half K subscribers on YouTube 94,000 Facebook page likes and 70,000 followers on Instagram. But the problem, exactly. But the problem is like the business was kind of dormant. So those people ha- haven't really had much contact with the brand yeah, and so they all subscribed. Hadn't, because- hadn't, they, they hadn't been nurtured. That audience hadn't been nurtured. Exactly. It was almost like a cold audience because yeah. they'd all, they'd all subscribed or followed the previous owner. So that's why they were there. So then to see a new face and to start posting new content, different style of content, like I still haven't cracked that. The only thing that goes on Facebook and Instagram is just posting memes. That's the only thing that gets engagement. And then on YouTube, I've kind of, 
I was like, okay, I'll go down the podcast route because it's kind of just easy content. And that was doing okay. Now I've kind of switched over to, to Twitter on that. We can, we can talk about that too. But um, so the YouTube, so then I changed again. I was like, okay, well, why don't I just use the YouTube then? Because it's, it's probably not going to grow that well because of the audience. People unsubscribing all the time probably hurts it. So I was like, I'll just do gear reviews. I'll use that as a way to do essentially like when I'm running best barbell for XYZ. I'll use that and I'll do my videos on there. If it gets extra views on YouTube, cool, whatever. But that's not the main purpose. The main purpose is just to have the content there that I can just embed at least in the written content. So that's kind of as far as I've gone there in terms of those. But yeah, I mean, the, acquiring those channels is is far more difficult to take over. You think you see a massive theme page or or I guess brand page, but if it was a per, almost like a personal brand and a certain style of content, especially many years ago, it's pretty hard to get going again. Yeah, we call that personal brand dependency. And typically, if I'm advising somebody that's wanting to sell their site, the, the first thing that I mention is removing key person dependency in two ways. One, as a personal brand. And number two, you needing to do the specific work and those specific tasks uh, because that, you know, it'd be hard for to, that to be rolled over. For example, if you were, if that he was doing a lot of coaching, uh, one-to-one coaching and then you took over the business and you decided to do the coaching uh, people are mostly paying for him yeah <laughs> so uh so with that i like that i like that strategy of you doing gear reviews and you doing it with your own brand but also posting it on there because it's re- that's really good for eeat and authority and building authority in the space your personal authority but also authority for the business in itself. Uh, so what else, what else have you worked done that's worked really well to grow this thing? So you went, so it was like making two to $400 a month and now it's making what? Yeah, like three to four grand. Yeah. Depending amazing. on the month. Congrats. Yeah. And how long so did that take roughly? That didn't, that didn't take too long. It was a 20, one to two years, somewhere in that range. Um, but obviously because it's age hey, has everything on there it was just about getting the co- i mean i've still got so much work to do on that damn site like it only has 300 and something posts now i mean that that site can have thousands because you have like every damn exercise you have every damn muscle group you have every damn workout like it's just infinite so there's still a lot to go on there um what was the original question again it was around yeah, what so else i've done right yeah so what else did you like do that helped you get to that three to four grand a month so some, so both my sites are monetized exactly the same way. So it makes it a little easier. So um, I recently put display ads on on both of them. Some of them still like I'm being ironing about, but it kind of just helps the bottom line anyway. So got display ads on both, got affiliate on both. And then I turned all my programs, all my digital products into a membership. And I did that last Black Friday. Yes, exactly love, a year ago. I love this. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about turning these products into a membership Mm -hmm. first though so you have a revenue split between uh membership ad revenue and affiliate revenue what's the percentage yeah roughly roughly. kind of if it's if it's over both sites it's i think it's almost like 33 percent on each but if it's depending on the site I'm, i'm trying to bring the membership up higher but on the combat sports site it would be right now mainly membership and affiliate and then display ads and then on the big it would be uh depending probably display ads and affiliate i think are slightly higher than the membership on that one that one's a little slower but that's just because it's i think it's just newer but uh i essentially bundled so the reason i went from digital products to membership was the volatility in the digital products that i was having previously so i had a, a bunch of funnels in place email opt-in, one-time offer, big discount for whatever product it was that was related to that opt-in, upsell to courses, et cetera. That was all working all good, but you know, you get one month, 1K, another month, 3K, another month, 2K, and it's just like, you know, it was just all over the place, just waiting to see if you're going to make sales that month. And I was like, okay, let's do a membership and put everything in just so I can get an idea and start getting some monthly recurring revenue through that. And it's been quite, it's been quite good. It is way harder than just selling digital products. Uh, People, you know, you, you get a one-time you, digital product. 
Yes, the exactly. One time two shots. Can be a membership as well, right? So, you, are you talking about yes. one time versus like recurring? Yes, one one time versus recur- versus subscription, I should say. Then, yeah. Um, because obviously when I'm selling the digital product one time, they get it cool, hands off. With the membership style, there's a little more hands on and you have to try and retain the members. It's obviously another skill. I'm still learning that, but more so the fact that my membership is more, the actual community side of it is kind of an add-on optional thing. They don't have to be in there. That's not the main product of the membership. So the, <laughs> I made this huge mistake when I first launched it. I was like, okay, I'm going to do a membership community and they pay for the community and the programs are separate. So I still keep my one-off digital products and I just have a community where people can come and ask questions, whatever else. And that flopped so hard um, launching that. And I was like, shit, okay, I'm just let's just put everything into that membership then all the programs all the courses they get the community all of it and that's when it actually took off especially for the black friday promotion i think i ended up by picking up most of my members just from that and yeah that was that was a, a big thing there and then i guess alongside the membership as well so i ended up i have a a training app that i use for it so a friend that i know he developed a company basically for training programs he sold it to a, a to someone else and he put me in touch with him and got me on this but they basically do an 80 20 rev share so you keep 80 percent, they take 20 percent, but it means you're not spending a hundred thousand dollars to develop an app plus have a development team ongoing you have to head up every time something goes wrong so it ends up being a, a pretty good deal but they take care of everything on the back end it's just all done through stripe and stuff and then all my programs are hosted on that thing. So no one can kind of take it and share it and whatever else. Plus the app is white labeled. So it's my brand. So it's my app essentially um, with that. So yeah, that's, that's really good. And then that's kind of that. And the private community is just in Discord. And that's cool. just optional. If they want to be in it, they can be in it. If not, all good. Cool. I like it. I love it. So I'm just thinking about the people that are listening. They're like, all right, cool. I've bought a content site. I'm going to buy a content sites, making money through display ads or affiliate revenue. The product thing is a really, really good way to go. But first you need to know what your audience is, you know, who your audience is and you need to know their wants, needs, fears and frustrations and desires and then package up a product that they're going to be wanting. They, they're going to be willing to spend money on. So you need a, a no brainer offer. How did you, how did you find out what those products were? So for people listening, so they can go, all right, cool. I I maybe want to sell some one-time products on my site um, to make some, you know, income outside of just being reliant on ads and affiliate. Yeah, I think I think my one was <clears throat> relatively easy, just because it's it's literally strength conditioning for combat sports. So it's strength conditioning programs for boxing, MMA, etc. So that. That's kind of a straightforward thing. So that, that was relatively easy. I did do some courses that was like teaching, I guess you could say the science behind the strength training and how to put something like a program your, together yourself. Same thing with the conditioning. Same thing. I brought um, a friend in to do like a weight cutting course. Um, I brought some more people in actually to do programs and stuff that I rev share with them. So they're specialists in whatever sport they are. Um, so I've got, I've got the Dutch judo Olympic strength conditioning coach. He did my judo programs and I just rev share with him on lift pick, eat big. I've got my friend who's two times world's strongest man competitor. He did the strongman program. So I rev share with him and also helps host the podcast too. And then my wife who is Commonwealth medalist, Olympic weightlifting, CrossFit games athlete does all the weightlifting stuff. Um, so yeah, we've got, we've, it's like a cool little, I mean, I've kind of leveraged my real life network to bring some of the stuff together which is quite quite cool but in terms of actually like choosing the digital products yeah if you i mean if you know your niche you kind of know what most people's problem problems are if you're like in the dog niche often there's like dog training right that's kind of yeah. a very that's a popular clickbank product i think if anyone's into affiliate mm-hmm. marketing there you go <laughs> and another way another way to think about it is like what is your number one best-selling affiliate product and then how do you go and turn that into your own digital product if it's a physical product maybe you can sell as a physical product if yeah you that's can. something i started doing too yeah that's what i'm telling you i've got too much going on i <laughs> i made my own uh sup- i made my own supplements too on top of it because i was like so you can private label them so you, it's kind of like drop shipping but with your your brand on them 
so I, I ranked for some terms in the supplement space, but the company that I'm using doesn't ha- doesn't have the formulations that I that I want to sell or put doesn't have the formulations I want to put my name on. If my name wasn't on the site, whatever, I'll sell anything. <laughs> but my but my name and face is on the site, so I'm not going to sell that. So I was like, okay, I'll just do creatine, easy enough, blah blah. blah. So now I've got a shit ton of creatine articles being posted. Um, I've ranked for actually for some buyer for some of the buyer intent keywords, just not number one yet. I'm just on the first page for a, a few of them. So I'm just cranking out the content and I'm sort of see if I can do an SEO play. And I mean, and I just have myself number one, of course. And then on top of that, I've partnered with some other sites. We can maybe get on that road too at some point. I've partnered with some other sites where I'm going to do the same thing and promote my own products on other people's websites. And that's going to be a, a... Yeah. Well, I mean, not to turn this into a coaching call, but the 80, 20 is super important to understand like where is, you know, 80, 80% of, you know, or twenty percent of what you're doing is getting eighty percent of the results, and that's you know, there's a really good book from Gary Keller called The One Thing. In fact, this book is uh, actually going around my circle of friends. So I give it to I, I gave it to somebody and said, "You need this. You need to read this. When you finished it, give it to this person." And that person, I've said, "When you finish that, give it to this person." And it's just going around my group of friends. Because my millionaire, I had um, my millionaire, my um, one of my mentors, he was, used to make sixty mil a year, threw the book at me. He just threw it at me and said, "Jared, you like?" Because I was the same. I was just like, "I'm all over." I was just like doing so many things, and uh, he was on stage one day, and I was sitting at the front at this like seminar thing that we all paid for. Um, and he used to use me as an example a lot because how well I did in business and I was like moving into property investing and he just made a show of it and threw this book at me and it's like this is this is important for even somebody that's like already getting results like I still use those principles of like the one thing the 80 20 so really good thing I think my wife to, like, I think my wife has that book I don't know if she got the hard copy or the Kindle version I have to mm. I have to find it yeah I think we got it in the house somewhere yeah it's a good book yeah so the digital products like it's so let's talk about how you sell the digital product because I know that you, you sort of mentioned it in passing, but I just, I think it would be worth people knowing the process of them being a visitor to the site, to them buying the product. You mentioned the opt-in and then you mentioned like selling off the back of that. So just explain like somebody that comes to the site and they want say maybe strength and conditioning for boxing what happens like how do you get them to buy that product like what are the steps they take in the back end the, the front end all of that yeah i'll do all of it uh mm. i'll go we'll just use the one-off product as an yeah, example one-time it's product, kind of yeah. the same yeah. Yeah. yeah it's kind of the same for the membership anyway but essentially they search strength training for boxing whatever it is they come to the page or it could be it could be a related page whatever it is on that page i'll hit them with an end content um, opt-in and a pop-up and it might be like hey here's the six secrets uh to increase punching power whatever it is and they opt in with their email if they don't opt in with the email they end up reading the whole article down the bottom i'll give them a call to action straight to the sales page of the program which actually converted the same or more people than people opting in which was weird so i ended up which is nice so i just i now always have a call to action down the bottom of an article um, going to the sales page so there's that but if they do opt in they get taken to a thank you page and on that thank you page it's a it's a one-time offer so they go on that page there's a countdown you got 15 minutes it's like thanks for subscribing but before you go blah blah, blah check, check out this deal whatever it is uh i've gone back and forth whether that's just the sales page and then with the timers in it with this with i guess the uh actual one-time offer or if it's kind of like a smaller kind of product style page but either or you're basically going and you're saying hey you can get this pro basically you're taking them from i was trying to find out about student training for boxing i've got this free thing that solves some uh or tells me a little bit about my issues and what to do then it's like oh then i'm giving the solution to be able to do that thing and then on this page is, is the solution but it's not the solution for 50 dollars. shit you can get it right now in the next 15 minutes for 17 or 27 dollars, but you got to buy it now and on the page, it's kind of like, hey, benefits, et cetera, et cetera. And then they click, if they want me, they can click to buy that and that'll take them to the shopping cart. They buy that. And then I'll have a bump offer on there. 
There might be seven to seventeen dollars of something else, supplement handbook, nutrition handbook, whatever, and then an upsell to the course, and that kind of creates that little funnel. But I think I tend to make that was really good. I tend to make um now most of my sales through email, especially through like you know like Black Friday like now, so um, various sales periods, and even just con uh, I guess just having it in the emails when i'm sending out content stuff like that i'm pushing youtube hard i think youtube is helping a lot especially with the membership i'm pushing youtube more than written content now on at least on the combat sports site because i've kind of covered most of the things on there i'm just trying to build a more a really i guess you could say loyal sticky audience on video that will uh kind of want to be part of the it. way you, the way is this is so mad about it's the same with this business with bob uh, we people will listen to podcasts for a year before they decide to, you know, just they want to build up trust. Make sure these Jerry Krauss guys is not like a scam artist or something, you know. Like that's they just need to build up their trust to to trust trust me and my products and services enough. Um, and you know, sometimes people are not ready as well. You know, maybe in the strength and conditioning space, are like I want to get in boxing, and then they just get to this one month, and it's like I'm going all in and they find your stuff and they just go for it. So yeah, uh, that's really, really cool. Thanks for the explanation. What software do you use for for the landing pages and the opt-ins and all that sort of stuff? Do you use the software or do you, you you're trying to do all that yeah. through WordPress? <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's all on WordPress, but I just run it through Thrive Themes. So Thrive Themes kind of just has has everything in one. So it's like, I think it's like 300 bucks a year, but you obviously have, you have the theme, you have a page builder, you have the opt-in email opt-in stuff you have the countdown timers you have you actually have a course back in if you want to use it wow that's cheap um, 300 bucks a year yeah it's, it's pretty good i mean it's a little bulky so it can be a little slow depending i mean mine's been fine so far it looks good drag and drop um to build your page which is really nice you don't have to use it for and stuff as well you can put them in there so for the actual checkouts no for the checkouts i use thrive cart oh uh, yeah for that yeah. So yeah, I, so I thrive I, um, themed and then thrive cart and the thrive cart. Yeah, two two different companies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I thought they might be the same. But thrive cart was really good. That's something that I usually recommend if someone's going to sell products, because mm-hmm. um, it's a one-time deal. There's no subscription. Yep. And how much does your thrive cart cost you? Uh, I think it's five hundred bucks. A year. And that's it for life. No, for, for life. For life. Lifetime okay. deal. No subscription. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, sick. that's legit. <laughs> <laughs> legit, isn't it? Yeah, awesome, awesome. So, what would you say are like two of the best things you've learned, maybe in hindsight, when when trying to grow your websites? I think now, I mean, I'm lucky enough. I get to talk to so many, I guess, people right, like successful people running businesses, top SEO people, just different podcasts I host, and I, I talk to my friend a lot who. I host this podcast, that Forte Growth one. We talk about, and even to some of the guests I've talked to recently, like now the biggest thing is not thinking that you are a, not thinking you're just SEO traffic from Google and just being a content site. You need to now be this multimedia site. Like my, my original plan, it's still kind of my plan, not really. I do have, a, like I wanted to build a mini network of sites under my main site, like have my own basically PBM, but legit sites. So, for example, I have my main combat sports site, then I have a boxing site, a Muay Thai site, etc., and they all kind of link up. So I actually acquired a jiu-jitsu site not too long ago um, that was just left for dead that someone was written on, still getting traffic and stuff, got it super cheap. And I've just pumped it with um, content. The homepage is sponsored by my main combat sports site, so nice homepage branded link going there. Um, and I wanted to build a whole mini network around that, but now the problem is like, you can't just rely on that Google traffic and you need to have, you need to have your brand basically everywhere you can, at least time-wise and video is becoming even more important on top of that. So that's just like more things you have to do. <laughs> so so the, the biggest thing now for me is trying to expand. So I've got my two main channels for the combat sports site is YouTube and of the, the main content on the website. And then obviously with some of the YouTube, like the short stuff can kind of, just go on the other platforms. And then for the uh, the Lift Big Eat Big site, it's the website and it's Twitter. That one, I'm pushing Twitter hardcore on that one, trying to grow that. Um, 
big. So those are the two main ones on that one. So yeah, just trying to be more, uh, I guess the the cliche word now is omnipresent, right? Omnipresent yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah think of yeah. your think of your content site as a media business and putting media yeah. out in multiple di- on multiple different platforms in different mediums that can drive people not to just ads uh, because that's where you start to make the you know you start to become more of a real business versus a content site. Like you've basically taken your sites as content sites to become. Uh, product and service based businesses helping people on the journey but a lot of content sites get people from the start of their journey learning and they just make money and a little bit from affiliate revenue without actually taking them all the way and giving them a better service uh, all the way through their journey and when you do that you make more money which means you can put more money back into media uh, and it's it's just a smart smarter route right Uh, so with uh, with that, I wanted to ask you about Twitter. Uh, how are you taking people from Twitter? What's your content on Twitter to get them to your site? Or are you not getting them just to the content? Are you pushing them towards products or opt-ins? What's your Twitter strategy, I guess? Yeah, right now it's almost like building a separate entity to be able to get traffic. So um, I, I know a guy... I've known him for a while. I was part of his membership a while ago, but he basically, him and a couple of others, they almost they specialize in like Twitter growth now. So he has like a five hundred and something thousand, uh, what do you call it, follower account, and he makes him and a bunch of other people that all make their living off Twitter, which is crazy. Like I was like, how are people making their living through high ticket coaching offers, through selling ex- whatever membership stuff? Also, I was like, holy shit, I couldn't believe it. Like just off that one platform. So I ended up by like basically getting him, buying something from him to essentially a Twitter growth service where he helps grow my Twitter. So when I post something, he helps engage with it, which helps blow that tweet up, which then gives me followers. Right now, he, the, I started like almost like a high ticket coaching thing just to help build the revenue on that as it grows. Haven't gotten anyone yet, but it's just time ago and the content being posted on there is kind of like a lot of stuff is just re- taking some of my articles and making it engaging and clickbaity on there. It could be taking trending videos and posting it on and asking questions to get people to engage. It could be posting um, controversial stuff, memes and whatnot to try to get people to engage. It's a whole different game. But if you, if you grow a Twitter, like a Twitter following big enough. And I mean, I host, we moved our podcast from YouTube recently onto Twitter spaces just to take advantage of something that's new there, record it, and can still upload it to Spotify and stuff later. But just the idea that the platform is growing and there's still so much that can potentially happen on there that if you have the followers now, I think you better take advantage. Like you cannot tell me that Elon Musk isn't going to somehow find a way to monetize spaces and to compete with TikTok and have like a Twitter shop and be, I mean, he's talked about, he wants it to be like the China, the English WeChat. He wants to be able to send money, buy stuff, all that. So why not, you know, bank or at least gamble on that fact mm-hmm. and at least try and create something there that if that does happen, you have an audience already there to leverage. Absolutely. I love that. That's really cool. Mm. James, this has been such a good chat. Thanks for coming on. Where can we send people to find out more about what you're up to? Dude, um, I don't know. Maybe to, I mean, either, either the sites that I mentioned, people can check those out. Um, I create. I bought. I bought my name. dot com. That was actually because my uh, my my friend that uh, that I host this podcast for. He's like, I swear this guy is ahead of the game and and thinking about SEO stuff. But he's like, man, if you just fill out your net your entity of your name, at your personal brand, and that links to your sites because you're an author on there, and then have all your socials as well, and then have mentions on all these different sites with your name, etc. It's all going to come back anyway. So that's why I, that's why I sent you my brand, my name yeah. website for the for the so link. I'll have that in, <laughs> yeah, I'll have that in the show. Yeah. So jamesdelacy.com. Then we've also got, got Twitter, your uh, Mr. James Delacy, and then also your Instagram. Yep. So I'll put, put links to that in the show notes as well. Yeah. So I love that personal yeah. branding strategy. It's the way to go. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Especially the way it is now, it's hard to make sites that are. I mean, I've talked to I've talked to someone. They got an authorship penalty from Google, a manual penalty for for not having clear authors on the page, which is crazy because you know people 
will be like, hey, is EAT a thing? Does authorship matter? Because you can have faceless sites, but they got literally manual penalty for not having a clear author, which is crazy. So yeah, it's just crazy. <laughs> it's getting more it's important. Also good because I mean, yes, it's really yeah. holding people accountable to not be hiding behind the laptop and have a faceless site. That's what we want. Is we want real trust and authenticity yeah. in the space in the on the internet. Yeah, if only Google like actually cared enough to change things because obviously they're still ranking fucking all the dog shit parasite pages for things they don't even write about just because of the yeah. it's a different game right high authority sites they can do their own thing everyone else has to play by different rules so yeah exactly it's just the way it is right now and it's only a matter of time until that changes and it's starting to yep. which we, we hope think. yeah 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 awesome james thanks for coming on really appreciate your time no cheers jared appreciate it Hey YouTube watcher, if you thought that video was good, you should check out this video here on the two best types of websites beginners should buy. Or check out my playlist on how I made my first 100K from buying websites and how to do due diligence. Check it out, it's an awesome playlist, you'll enjoy it.